Hey everyone, we are looking at how to draw a derivative graph. You've found the derivative at points before. So if you had those derivatives at all these different points and you strung them all together, you would have a new function. Makes some sense, right? So this is how we do it. I like to go for the easy stuff first. For example, at x equals five, this thing is horizontal. I can look at that and go, like if I were walking along this, that's flat ground. I'm going to skip around all over the place on this graph. It's going to drive some of you nuts. Sorry about that. So I'm going to plot this point. So when x is 5, I have a 0 slope. So bam. I can look around and I see that at x equals 7, it's also flat. So I can plot that. And while I'm poking around at x equals 1, it's flat there as well. So I now have these three flat spots. I also have a line here. That's really convenient. I can just look at that line and go, oh, the slope of that line is 1. So I can, you know, like at when x is 9, my slope is 1. When x is 10, my slope is still 1. When at x is 11, my slope is still 1. So I can just draw a horizontal line here. But what about as I head back towards x equals 8? Well, at x equals 8, we actually have an open circle on our derivative because there is, you can't draw a tangent line on a corner or cusp. This, the derivative of this function will not be continuous. Okay, so now how do we find the other places? And the way we do that is we just draw tangent lines. For example, looking at x equals zero. If we, remember, we want to come from underneath the curve, and I look at, and I kind of squeeze that out, and I can draw myself a little tangent line there, and this graph is going to get really full in a hurry. So at x equals 0, my, I have this line drawn, and looking at this, and I can try to just see what the slope is, and it looks like, like here's a spot, like here's a point that's convenient. I'm going up, say, mm, two and over about three and a half. So that's what, four sevenths? That's not very convenient. I'm just gonna call it about a 0.5. But when x is zero, my slope is about a half. Looking at x equals two, if I draw a tangent line for that, coming from underneath, and sometimes I just put my ruler down and, and don't draw the line. I'll just look at where the ruler is, but I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and draw that. So when x is 2, my tangent line is about there. So now looking at that point, at x equals 2, my slope is about a negative 1-ish line. So just looking at kind of the rise over run. So I can plot that point. When x is 3, this is getting quite steep, but when x is 3, I'm trying to do two colors, it's kind of annoying for pen juggling, but if I draw a tangent line there, my slope is somewhere around, like if I look at from here to there, down 3 over 1, so a slope of negative 3, so it's quite steep there. And then as I get towards x equals 4, I could draw another tangent line. This time I'll be coming from the top, but I kind of squeeze that out, draw my line. So when x is 4, my slope is about three, negative 3 fourths ish. I can plot that. Looking at x equals 6, I can just kind of put my ruler down. And looking at my ruler, I'd say my slope is about one and a half. I'm just going to plot it. And so from six to seven, it goes from like steep, it gets less steep until it flattens out. So I have like at x equals say six and a half, my slope might be around a half. And then from as I head toward eight, my slope looks like it's about a negative one-ish. But at eight itself, because I can't draw a tangent line on a corner, I'm gonna have an open circle here. So now that I have all these points plotted going across, I can just connect them in a smooth curve. Something like that. So this is something you'll get some 
practice at, you'll get better at it. It gets kind of easier. I know this looks weird, especially because I just freehanded the original graph, so it doesn't follow patterns nearly as nicely. You're going to see a lot of really interesting patterns on what you get when you start with, say, a cubic and what the derivative looks like for a cubic, or if you start with a quadratic and what its derivative graph looks like. So the way to do this, though, again, is just pick individual points. Well, first of all, find where things are flat and plot those points. Like, oh, look, it's a flat spot at 7. Plot a 0 there. My slope is 0 at 5. I plotted, so I plotted the 0 here, and so on. And then just go in between those items and then plot points, and then you can draw your derivative graph in. So that is drawing a derivative from a graph. And stay tuned because you're going to learn how to do it on your calculator as well.